I swear this is not clickbait. Hey guys, it's your resident Florida woman, Jen here, and I just wanted to check in because apparently the Tampa Bay market is the number one housing market in the country, according to Zillow. And I've done some videos here on the channel about real estate and just about the cost of living in Florida. And with everyone researching and trying to move to Florida, I wanted to give some insight as someone who actually lives here. Now, this is crazy here and a lot of things are changing. And I did a video like about a year ago about how much it costs to actually live in Florida. Needless to say, things have changed a little bit as evidenced by the title of this video. And yes, that is for real. There are some certain areas here in the Tampa Bay region and there's a lot of development going on. So I was looking at uh, these apartments that are being developed in Water Street, which is in downtown Tampa. I wouldn't say it's like a ridiculously hot area in terms of demand. It's more like up and coming. It is walking distance from some cool things like the convention center, Sparkman Wharf and Emily Arena, which is where you go to watch like the hockey games and concerts and stuff. But when I first moved to Tampa in 2007, not a lot of people wanted to live in downtown Tampa. So that area is certainly going under a lot of changes, but I literally almost fell out of my chair when I saw these new luxury apartments. So let me pull them up because you are going to be like, what is going on? So these apartment complexes, this one is called Asher. And I like how all these luxury apartments are popping up. They're in downtown Tampa. They're in downtown St. Pete. And even apartments like out near Brandon and stuff, like they're also not cheap. So I was looking at these apartments, they're brand new and they're leasing. So let's check out the floor plans because you're going to be like, what is going on here? All right, this is going to take a minute to load. Okay, so the first thing I want, I've noticed is they have these studio apartments. They're 300 square feet. That's smaller than one of those like tiny houses. And they're charging $1,500. So $1,500 to $1,900 for a studio apartment. Now, granted, the location is pretty convenient. I would have a hard time paying that much for that little square footage. And I also noticed these apartment complexes, everything is called residences now. So this is the AsherResidences.com. Now we'll take a look at some photos because they are very nice, but I just wanted to point out how bonkers the prices have gone for rent in Tampa. And I'm seeing post after, po after post on Reddit of people saying they're getting priced out of their own apartments and they can't afford to live here anymore. It's just nuts. The one bedrooms, these are getting a little bit bigger. You got 600 square feet. And some of these are going for, does this say $3,000? Oh my gosh, $3,000 for a one bedroom apartment. I, I'm sure they, they're getting people to lease these because obviously they probably wouldn't have built them and done all this stuff to it. I'm just like, what is going on here? I wanna point out, all right, so the Asher only has studio to two bedrooms for the two bedroom. Now this is 1300 square feet. They're charging over $4,000. This is just nuts. It's like reaching Manhattan prices or Los Angeles. And I never would have expected this to be in Tampa, Florida, but this is, this is peak 2022, I guess. And I mean, granted, it looks like a pretty nice place. It's brand new. And we'll look at some photos because they do. They're very modern and obviously very like they got all the cool features. All right. So this is what you're getting for your three to four thousand dollars a month. I mean, it does look pretty swanky and I'm sure the insides are really cool. Not like a ton of photos on here, but again, four grand a month for these apartments now leasing. If you have that sort of budget, I guess this is for you. I'm just like, who is renting these apartments? For real, who is renting these apartments? All right, this next one is going to blow you away even more. This is the Cora Residences, also on Water Street. Again, really beautiful, brand new, high rise place. They're really trying to market as a luxury space. I totally get it. This does look really cool. I don't know if I personally would pay that much. And I also wonder this, like if you're going to pay four to $5,000 a month for a luxury apartment, couldn't you just like buy a place? I mean, I guess there are some situations like maybe they're just a short term resident or maybe they just moved to town and they want to rent for a year while they're trying to figure out where they want to buy a place. That totally makes sense. 
I'm just so fascinated by the fact that the Tampa Bay area can support apartments that cost so much. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pictures and then we're going to show you the prices. All right, so yeah, this does look really cool. I mean, who wouldn't want to live here? I mean, if, if I could live here for free or very cheap, I would totally do it. It is conveniently located to a lot of amenities and they are building a lot of stuff in that area, I've noticed, and there's more things around. I mean, this does look, um, is this like a nice, nice pool and stuff. You go, I guess, meet other people with a lot of money. I don't know. But let's check out the floor plans because you're going to be like WTF. OK, so they've also got studios. These are a little bit bigger than Asher. These are uh, 400 square feet. So, I mean, you're really living large. These start out at $1,900. OK, call for pricing not currently available. All right, so let's take a look at the two bedroom because these do compare with Asher. Some of them are 3500 to uh $4,300. So that's uh, definitely a bargain there. But here's the thing where when I saw it, I just could not believe it. They have a three bedroom, three bathroom model. It's 1,500 square feet. It's renting for $55.95 to $56.95 per month. I mean, that's incredible. I just cannot believe this. So here's the floor plan. And to put things into context, this is about the same size as my house. I think my house is about 1,600 square feet. Our mortgage is $1,200 a month. So these apartments to rent this is about five times the price as my home mortgage, which is just unbelievable. I mean, it does look cool. You got a nice like great room. You got a balcony. You got a, a very nice walk-in closet. The bedroom is actually pretty small if that's the master yeah the bedrooms are not that big and it does have three bathrooms i mean look at these prices i'm just like what the heck for real i'm not joking this is actually happening in tampa florida fifty five hundred dollars to fifty six hundred dollars a month for rent i'm just like what is going on here obviously there's a market for this i suppose i just really i'm really curious about who is the person that's like yeah i'll drop fifty six hundred dollars a month on rent to live in downtown tampa in my personal opinion i think downtown st pete is probably a hotter neighborhood in terms of desirability stuff to do walking distance to things and just the vibe there seems to be a lot of younger people going to downtown st pete and they also have their own luxury apartments and luxury condos. So those areas are pretty popular, but I still think downtown St. Pete is probably, in my opinion, more popular. You might disagree with me, but a lot of people are trying to move to downtown St. Pete. And I used to live in South St. Pete in a neighborhood called Coquina Key. My house there, as you may have seen on the channel, was $47,000 and I had a $500 mortgage. I don't think I could ever fathom paying $5,600 a month for rent or for a mortgage. Maybe I'm just really cheap, which is which is true. It's crazy because I was looking up how much it would cost to rent like out my house in homes in my neighborhood are being rented out for between twenty two hundred dollars and twenty five hundred dollars per month. And I am not super close to the city center. I'm about a half an hour outside Tampa and outside St. Pete. So I could rent out my house for about double my mortgage. Homeowners are also in a weird situation because our costs are going up as well. So I want to talk about this because, well, yes, you are kind of locking in your housing costs and sort of protecting yourself from price jumps like what the renters are seeing. But my homeowners and flood insurance has gone up a few hundred dollars compared to last year. So that means my monthly payment will be going up. And my auto insurance is also has also gone up. Florida auto insurance is pretty high compared to the rest of the country. I guess it's because we have a lot of insurance fraud here, which is not at all surprising because it's Florida. And as far as other stuff goes, I just want to give you guys a quick update on my monthly costs. So I just checked my electric bills. And my last two electric bills were for $108 in December and then $135 in November. So pretty low. Again, our house is about 1,600 square feet. We keep our thermostat with the AC a lot higher than other people, though. I normally keep the thermostat at 78. And in the winter, we put the heat on like 77. And I checked my water bill and the last water bill was $55. So if that gives you any general idea of what the prices are like, hopefully that's helpful. And... The other thing about the 
utilities as well is it really kind of depends on how old your house is, how much insulation it has and how energy efficient it is. My house is about a decade old, so it does have some decent insulation and OK windows. When we lived in the $47,000 house, it was built in 1955 or something. The electric bills were ridiculous because the house had no insulation and like really bad windows when we first moved in. When we replaced the windows, things got a lot better. I also want to point out the insurance stuff has changed in the past year, apparently because the insurers here in Florida were given the OK to raise rates because there was apparently a lot of roof claims that were fraudulent. So the prices have gone up for everybody. And it's interesting because the homeowner's insurance rates for newer homes are going to be much better for older homes. And I want to take you guys to my friend Melanie's channel because I think it has a lot of good information. If you're here and you're like, wow, what what's going on in Florida? My friend Melanie recently did a couple videos that I think would be helpful for you guys if you're researching Florida. The first one, definitely watch the Florida insurance video. That explains what's going on with the current situation and why everybody's rates are going up. And also, Melanie talked about the housing market because a Zillow named Tampa, the number one housing market for 2022. And it is true, a ton of people are moving here and we're getting a lot of new residents. And that certainly is driving up the demand for housing and the price of homes. So if you're interested in learning more about that from a realtor's perspective, I would recommend heading over there. I'll link it below in the description box. And in full disclosure, I do produce Melanie's channel. So obviously we work together. But even before I did that, Melanie was our personal realtor and I've worked with her before. And I wouldn't be doing a channel, the channel with her if I didn't like and respect her and think she did really good work. She's been great with navigating people through this really tough seller's market. And she's been very successful with her strategy for getting offers accepted and for getting, especially out of town buyers, the homes that they're looking for, um, because it is really difficult right now. And a lot of People are kind of being priced out or they're getting frustrated because their, you know, offers aren't being accepted and they're not able to find a home. Head over to Melanie Loves Tampa Bay. Just shameless plug here. If you would like to know more about the market, hear from a realtor. And I would encourage you if you are looking to to buy here in the Tampa Bay area, reach out to her email. Go to our website, MelanieLovesTampaBay.com. You can register and then they'll reach out to you. You can also text uh, call or email. She's been pretty, really busy with all this stuff. And those are the best ways uh, to contact her. I cannot believe homes are going for these prices and rent is just skyrocketing. I almost think rent is going up more than the home. Like, it's just crazy. I'm seeing a lot of posts on Reddit, like landlord is raising rent from $1,400 to $2,200, stuff like that. I moved to Tampa for, for the first time in 2007. And I remember the days where you could get in a decent apartment in a reasonably safe neighborhood for six to $800. And those days are gone. And I also remember going to look at houses with Melanie in 2009. It was right after all the housing crash stuff. Back then, it would have been really hard to believe that the prices would be what they are now. Because I would be driving around and there'd be houses listed for $14,000, $30,000, $40,000, $12,000. Crazy. And those ha same homes now, if you go to check, they're being sold for three hundred. dollars Three, it's just nuts. And I was look, looking at my own home value and we bought our home about two years ago and the value has gone up over $100,000 and we've done nothing to the house. We would like to do some stuff to the house. In all honesty, if we could sell this place and move to a cheaper area, we would. We probably would. We, we were interested in maybe moving a little farther south or maybe a little farther inland. The thing with the prices here is obviously the closer you are to the city the, or a very popular area, the more expensive stuff will be. And it's when you go to the outlying areas like the one we're in or like a one that's not close to the water, you're going to get more affordable prices. But I'm even seeing that be more difficult now because I was looking at prices in certain areas we were looking at that were quote unquote lower cost. And even those homes are not that much cheaper, like they were more expensive than I would have thought. So the problem a lot of Florida homeowners have is, yes, you could sell your house for a lot of money, but unless you're moving out of state, where else are you going to go. We were looking and I was just having a hard time finding somewhat equivalent homes that were significantly cheaper than our current house. And there's not a lot out there. We're a little bit reluctant to go to an older home because unless you're going to do a complete teardown or take things down to the studs, 
your homeowner's insurance on an older home is going to be pretty significant compared to a newer home. So that's why I would really encourage you to watch that insurance video because I learned a lot. I'm fairly well versed with stuff like that, but the insurance agent Maria Rodriguez really knows. I mean, I just learned a lot, especially about the roof stuff. So that was pretty interesting. If you are thinking about moving here, have a job lined up for sure. Two jobs, three jobs, or a lot of money because you're going to need it when you come here because a lot of apartments, they require you to show proof of income of at least three times the rent. Again, or that, or like maybe if you have like, if you can show you've got like $3 million in the bank, that might help too, as far as like proof of funds. You're going to need some cash to move down here. And I think now I'm in a situation where I'm in a dual income, no kids situation. My husband and I are child free. I've talked about that before as well. Between the two of us, we definitely make under $100,000 combined, but also we have no children and we managed to buy a home before the prices went crazy. So I think if we were renting in this situation, we would be having a harder time than we are. That's just the way it is. And it's unfortunate because a lot of people are struggling to deal with all of this uh, rent volatility. It's like, what do you do? But if you're moving here, you either have to have a like a good job or several jobs or a lot of roommates, I guess, in this situation. And there's a lot of people online that I'm seeing, like I'm looking for a roommate, that sort of thing. So we're you're starting to see like it's just insane because this is the kind of price I would see the fifty five hundred dollar price. Something I would see in like Manhattan, not here in Florida. But this is just I guess I guess this is twenty twenty two in Florida. There are jobs down here, though. And even I would say, though, if you're like a couple, like if you're a younger couple, uh, if you guys can both make 40 or 50 K a year, you're probably going to be OK. If you can't, I know the market is super insane. But if rent prices keep going up, you're probably going to want to try to buy something. There are some lower cost areas if you're working from home or if you're working somewhere that's not near the city centers, you're probably going to be better off because then you don't have to worry about being really close to work. But people are really starting to live farther and farther out and have longer commutes. Melanie has talked about this a lot in her channel. The Wesley Chapel area is blowing up and that's not super close to downtown Tampa. But hopefully maybe this whole working from home situation helps more people be able to have more options because they don't have to live super close to the office anymore. If you're only going to the office once a week or twice a week, it's not as bad if you live 40 minutes from work versus you living five minutes from work. And I've always tried to live fairly close to work when I could because, man, a long commute like really just feels terrible. I used to live in Atlanta and the traffic there was pretty unbearable. I would highly encourage you have jobs lined up if you're a couple, you're going to both need to make 40 to 50 K to be able to live somewhat comfortably. In in my opinion, there may be people that disagree, whatever. There are jobs, though, and a, some of these places are starting to pay more, especially even for these entry level service level jobs. Like I get Kroger grocery delivery and one of the delivery folks told me that they start out at 1850 an hour. That's pretty decent. And they also I think I think they get benefits. And that's the starting pay. And they said they get regular raises. They also don't have to drive their own vehicle. So there are some pretty decent paying opportunities, even for entry level positions. There are more companies that seem to be moving down to Florida. And again, with this work from home stuff, you may be able to make California income and live in Florida or New York City income and be able to live in Florida. I believe to be a Florida resident, you have to live here. I, th I think it's something like six months out of the year or more. Obviously, the fact that Florida has no state income tax is a pretty big draw to a lot of people coming from California and New York and other places that have state income tax. But just keep in mind that we do have some costs here that are more than average, like the car insurance stuff. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on here because it's just bonkers. Let me know what you think below in the comments. If you have any tips for Florida or questions, throw them at me. I don't know if I can answer them. If I can't, definitely head over to Melanie Loves Tampa Bay because I'm sure she could probably help you a little bit more. Anyways, I'm Jen and I will see you guys again in the next video.